Hello there my fellow crumpets and welcome back to my channel. It's me Lord Crumbs aka Alex and I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's recently subscribed. Today's build everyone's been putting up their tiny builds they're going here there everywhere. Tried my luck at building a tiny build but it something just didn't sit right and then I suddenly got this wave of influx when I was looking through the buy debug menu of building a massive castle. That is a video that I have sped up for you. Believe you me, you don't want to sit there and watch the four hours plus footage I have of it being natural speed, especially when the game starts to lag out a little bit, because this house is very large. In fact, I actually put the like the lot zone as a tiny residential to see how many tiles it would say and I actually went over the 999 tiles that it has. Not surprising to be honest because I do have a whole like basement floor where the rocks all sit and all that sort of stuff. So without further ado let's jump in to my castle build. So welcome to the speed build part of this video, so I hope you liked the little intro beginning bit there where I did a day and night view and we'll explore a bit of the castle a bit later on in depth and of course you'll be able to see it as I build it here. This is actually the third version of the castle, I did several other attempts on it but that's only because when I came to actually recording the footage I didn't want to be changing my mind over floor plans and layouts and all that sort of stuff, I wanted to make sure that video was more efficient. This is how I normally do my builds anyway, especially the larger ones in this scale, so therefore I know exactly what I'm doing and I can go with the flow with that styling. Though this one had a few little issues with like the stairs and stuff like that, which you'll see shortly. For some reason the stairs were absolutely massive and I didn't know why that was. I tried like making the wall heights shorter and smaller and all that sort of stuff and dragging a new room to the side. But yeah, for some strange reason I couldn't get it and I had to, you know, find the perfect spot for it to go in. Like, it's just weird. There's not actually much in a way of a landscaping because I do end up covering the whole lot with a lot of by debug rocks and plants and stuff like that. So your sims, because they are debug objects, your sims will actually walk through all the rocks. But once they're actually in the castle, they should be fine. One thing to mention about this lot, if you do decide to download it and want to play in it, you will have to have a bb.move objects on enabled. This is because I do overlap a few items and, you know, interact with them so that we can, like, you know, cover the foundation up. I do the rocks a bit later on, but that's only because I didn't want the object count to be quite high. The actual floor plan itself, yes, it is a large building, but the floor plan isn't massive. It's not like my Windenburg Palace that I did for my array. This is actually, you know, a decent livable size regardless of how big the actual lot is. So there's a taller tower section, the first one as you come across the bridge. This is the main accommodation area for your sims. There's only eight bedrooms in this, but a couple of beds have either double beds on it or two single beds and stuff like that. I do have like a servant's quarters in like the towers and all that sort of stuff. You've got to have a servant's quarters in a place like this, otherwise the house won't function properly. Here I'm just adding the detailing of little bump outs and all that sort of stuff. I like this bit because if you're a guard in this place, thinking realistically speaking, you can actually walk around the whole perimeter, weaving in and out of the towers and the walkways without actually going inside the house itself. So this is what I thought was quite nice, that you can walk around. And in front of these, I will be putting arches. And then in the interior walls behind, I actually put some windows, which you'll see a bit later on, which actually brings some beautiful lighting when they come through, and some views as well. Just gives it that a little bit more, oh, you know, aesthetically pleasing. The stone floor at the bottom here that you are seeing, I do detail it a little bit. I don't go too heavy because I did consider, obviously, the rocks are going to be covering the majority of this, but I didn't want it just to be all plain stone. And obviously I like the supporting beams holding up the little bump out bits all around the 
like the um, foundation level. So there I am just making sure that there's different wall textures but in the same sort of thing to just break it up so it's not the same sort of texture here, there, everywhere. Put placing columns, archways and just changing the colours of the archways to be honest because I originally went for these like the wood ones, the brown ones. But I actually ended up liking the same sort of colour as the stone, which I think if you would agree with me, actually looks alright. I originally used like the taller ones and unfortunately when you get just even a little bit far away from a the lot, they filled in and all that sort of stuff. So from afar, which is what this lot is great for, is taking pictures from afar, it didn't look that great. Whereas these ones actually you can see from, from no matter what distance you are from yourselves. You can see the courtyard has been opened up and I put some like trellises around the top and I'm now putting pillars everywhere, raising them up, raising them down, matching them up with the freezers and the floor covings or coverings, whatever you want to call them. I don't actually know what they're probably called. But this section now is the attic that we're going through. The reason why I can place it so correctly is because I, like I said before, I know where the rooms are, where lots are and all that sort of stuff. So it's quite easy for me. In fact, I had a picture on my second screen whilst I was building, so if I needed to refer to anything, I could just go back to that. So when you see the flickering on the screen, I've tried cutting them out as much as I can of my desktop. That is me flicking between the, two, the different images on the screen on different floors. Here I am just placing all the windows, you know, finishing up the cornices around at the top and like the freezers and all that sort of stuff, making sure that it looks alright, doing the tower, doing the roof sections and of course the top flat area where in my head the guards stand and keep watch out throughout the day. You may notice that this floor we're working on now is actually a like a small wall height but it's got the freezers on them. By doing so you have to have move objects on enabled and also if you just hold down the shift and click on the wall you can actually put freezers on small wall type. But please bear in mind that no door can fit through so the doors I place are the smallest ones so I just happen to you know ignore the fact that they don't actually fit on correctly and also you have to find adequate window sizes for it as well because obviously there's not much wall to work with. So you can see here I'm going round and adding little pillars and doing the little detailing and finishing off the roofs. To be honest I wish the roofs were a bit more obvious when you're looking at them from the ground floor but I suppose it does break up the colours a little bit and the lighting this glass roof on top of the tower sends through downstairs is just to die for and I love it. In fact I love it so much when I change the tops of the, the building over the back there I actually use the same sort of technique and this goes lovely views in the master bedroom. Here I am just copy and pasting the roofs around on the towers you know making all the towers uniform. You know, may notice the right now yeah the top corner in the top like, right hand corner there is a taller tower on the shorter building that's only because I didn't want the building to be as flat so I just you know made the tower a bit taller. This is where I noticed that my game actually started getting a bit laggy so this may be because the amount of rooms that are on the building and the amount of detailing as I say the objects aren't placed in. When you do come to renovate this lot when you if you want to move walls and stuff like that just be remembered please bear in mind that it may be a little bit laggy but placing objects is absolutely fine and gameplay is absolutely fine it's just when you're moving walls and fences and stuff like that. Going around and finishing up the, this top level, just adjusting a few things, adding roofs and I had to adjust this one because this wall height is actually taller than the last one. So I'm just making the adjustments and changing the height of the walls and all that sort of stuff. I can't actually go any higher in the way of the walls because obviously I use a dummy foundation level and you'll see why properly later as like I said before it's all down to the rocks and stuff like that but there is part, there is part of a fake basement level that you can use and I basically I put like a mausoleum for all the royal family members that's where I put them there and like a little walkway to the little nook in the middle of a like the middle of a build I thought you know what they can't all be rocks going up there so I thought I'll have a little platform of like a wishing well and you know yeah that's quite a nice little place to go paint and get some inspiration 
this I thought was quite clever, um, if I do say so myself. Basically, I worked out, how, out, worked out how many by debug objects I needed minus a bridge, and I put them all into overlapping each other into one room, saved it, and then when I come to the filming, I just plonked them down here. So instead of going in and out of the menu all the time, and if anyone ever used the be, uh, by debug items, you know how frustrating it is when you, you're like, you know, trying to find objects or when you you're pacing them and you know it's like oh a wall's out so you quickly move it or you add like a pillar that you missed and stuff like that and then you have to scroll all the way down the menu again to try and find it and there's no organization in that menu it's just all the items are there and it's just impossible so I thought you know what just drag them all here and you know they're all there put some some extras there if I need any extras and here we go I was just going around and just placing them all like using the original size in the pond level and then downsizing using the square bracket key the left hand side one and then raising them up by using control 9 and lowering them control 0 into the same places all around the castle which I think ties it in now this part gets exciting this is where it all starts coming together with the foundation and the rocks and the walls ah oh, just you wait it's rather exciting this is where the bridges come into it now, as you can see I use four and then with a couple of pillars in between just to block it off and then later on I do add some rocks around it as well so it's, you know, looks quite nice and seamless. I didn't notice any gaps, um, I did try and cover them up with either ivy, rocks or terrain itself but when you see me manipulating the terrain with the pillars it makes the pillars act really unusually so I tried doing as little terrain manipulation as possible. Letterboxes in the game are ridiculously ugly so there I am just you know disguising the letterbox within that and there's the by the bug gate that I found which fits in absolutely perfectly. It all swivels around on the post so I didn't need to have, make some mechanisms to make it look like it's going to open or not or close so I really enjoyed that now and here I am placing a rock so daylight view is absolutely incredible they look stunning they look good and I'm really quite proud of how they turned out however when you go to night time oh boy some of them light up some of them don't some of them do oh it's just an absolute nightmare some of them don't even light up they only light up halfway because later on you'll see me put a load of um like lights around the outside of the building and all that sort of stuff so I pondered about removing the lights but I actually really like the lights outside so what I ended up doing was raising up lights in the game and also putting lights in the fake bus uh, fake basement level so that the rocks actually around well the lights around the base of the foundation actually light up didn't focus so much lighting up the lights on the you know the other side of the moat but it worked out fine, not perfect, but as you can see in the photos and the video, it is manageable and it is ideal. So this is where I'm discovering a whole plethora of different rocks and stuff like that they use in the world and I fell in love, I little caves and all that sort of stuff. I just wish we had Planet Zoo terrain controls and that would be incredible having little secret caves within these as well that your sims can actually go explore and having little treasures and stuff like that that would be an absolute dream here i am working around at the gatehouse trying to fit up the rocks trying to make it look as somewhat natural and all that sort of stuff and also accessible for the sims themselves and trying to cover up any ridges if you see any gaps then please do let me know as you say when you're um, working on something for so long you tend to get blind to certain things I think I did a pretty good job covering up all the little like gaps and everything like that but I'm probably knowing me I've missed something um, if you do decide to download this let me know and then we can I can try and fix it and stuff like that now you can see the little courtyardy bit in the middle of the center of a lot that I put in and keep the lighting of the rocks the same IHD, remove a couple of squares of the ceiling and then make sure well, the rock covers it so you can't see a gap in the floor and stuff like that. So then that therefore you can have like daylight rocks without them going nighttime in you know all day round so it has the same light light lighting as rocks on the outside which is you know I was like hmm 
that was something to uh, to think about and work around, which is a bit annoying. At this part, you can now see that I'm doing a slight bit of terrain paint here. There's not much in the way of terrain paint, as you can see, as I mentioned earlier as well, there is not much landscaping. So what I end up doing is just terrain painting all around the rocks where I can, because obviously some rocks overlap and do overspill the lot, and also this little walkaway part here. And this is obviously nice and smooth and it all works well and I was actually quite chuffed at how this area turned out because I put pop some lovely trees on there later on. I did cut out the landscaping part of it as well. Here I am going around with like brown paint, not on, on like a soft brush so it's not too harsh and now I'm fitting up the moat with over, like larger size moss and stuff like that and later on I do put some lilies because I thought, you know what, there's not going to be a cleaner who's going to need to clean this moat a lot so there's going to be, are going to be a bit of moss in there and then that'll make sense for when I eventually put the ivy around a uh, fake basement floor and that's the reason why I wanted a fake basement is so that I can actually put ivy on them Sims team, why can't you put ivy on foundations? Why does it have to sit on top? It just doesn't look right, I wish you could just lower them down but this is my work around it and there I am just oversizing some like grass and heather and stuff like that just to fill in with gaps a bit more and maneuvering stuff around and I notice here I've got a couple of straight edges so I do look through the uh, debug catalogue finding some more rocks and you can see there it's, that was sped up 10 times and it still took me a while to find the rocks even though I know exactly where they're from they're from a cats and dogs expansion pack and they should be right there there's loads of them Ugh. But hey home, and yeah, there's the ivy going down, which is absolutely makes it. I didn't want to cover up all the detailing that I had, otherwise all those pillars and all that sort of stuff would actually be a waste of time. So I actually end up moving them down and stuff like that. Here I am using them to actually cover up more like gaps I couldn't quite get to with rocks, and then I do end up changing the colours of the bridge because as much as the um, the castle is like this brown sandstone it's in. The Bidebog Bridge was this grey colour and with the same fence as I was using on the castle it just didn't look right so I ended up just changing the colour of the fence matching it to the grey style sizing down these lights, raising them up a little bit so they sit lovely on the, the fake post that I put and yeah going around adding the lighting over every well every other door and stuff like that inside outside and it just adds just adds that extra bit of layer of like you know light and luminosity to the exterior of the building which i find makes this build is just every angle you look at this build it's just nice to look at it's aesthetically pleasing i know i'm tooting my own horn here and i know it's really smug and all that sort of stuff but this is one of those builds I am really, really proud of. So if you're proud of something, why not shout about it? And I'm just checking here. Now I'm getting onto the actual floor plan of all that sort of stuff. Uh, this section, I do actually map out the floor plan for you so you can sort of see my thought process and all that sort of stuff. In the other tower, I do cut in and out every now and then. I record different rooms, things like bedrooms and bathrooms. I only show you one of those and then I jump in. But this is the attic floor, I didn't really know what to do with this, so I put like a little uh, servant's area, if that makes sense. Oh, this is another thing I thought was quite cool as well. I actually um, used the Tudor style wallpaper, but where the pillars would only be there, like one tile in, I would also bring the stone tile in for the thing, and it, bring the stone tile in by one and all that sort of stuff, and it just makes that, I don't know, if, let me know what you think, but I just really enjoy how that looked with the stone coming in a little bit and then it's like they've then fastened some wood to like warm it, pad it out a little bit by putting this plaster on top. I didn't want to have too many modern extremities but obviously this is the Sims game so they do need stuff like the computer, they do need a bathtub, they do need showers, they do need toilets and unfortunately we don't have any like medieval style furniture that we can give to them so I actually end up just using those but I use like electronics very minimally trying to stay true to what it actually is you know what it would be in when this castle was built some rooms are fancier than others some have better curtains some have better furniture some have more lighting some even have fireplaces but they are all kind of what similar as such 
but this master bedroom is the one I actually wanted to show you in depth because it has got this little seating area with the light coming through here. You can see that star coming on top. It's just, oh, it's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. A little reading nook here for whoever's staying here, ma'am. And then those two dresses, I actually moved to the corners of the room because I ended up putting fireplaces here, one either side, which, because for some strange reason, I forgot to put fireplaces in when I was burnishing these until I went a bit later on. So I quickly went back to the other side and just added those in. I like how that these rooms, none of them have fancy wallpapers, none of them have like, you know, expensive walls because let's face it, if you've ever toured old fancy castles, they've still got all their exper like exposed brick still out there. So I wanted to tie that in here, but also making it slightly bit different. In rooms like the dining room and the music room and the entertainment room, there are special wallpapers and stuff like that. But also it's blended in with the stone as well, with some posts to like cap it all off. Up here, I thought this would be a great little area for your Sims to, you know, do a bit of gardening because there's not much room on the actual floor downstairs itself. And also, you know, do a bit of flower arranging if that's your Sims a cup of tea. On the bigger, like, the roof ceiling type thing, there's actually nothing up there because one, I didn't know what to put up there, and two, it's just, there's no point in placing objects that that you didn't really need but it is fully accessible in this tower here the tall tower there's a staircase at least from a bottom floor all the way up to the top so it just keeps spiraling up oh i just wish we had spiral staircases can you imagine how nice would that be so i toy around with these chimneys not really sure i like them at first i was like mm, i like them but then i just realized we got these like little tubey fireplaces which i actually prefer a lot more than you know what I thought here you can see that I'm actually working on the downstairs part of it and you can see where all the rocks overlap and stuff like that and come in and I do paint the floors black and have a black wallpaper just so it's not so it's really obvious to say that you can't go in here but this walkway here leads to that little central area and also then to the right of it there will be the mausoleum which takes you out to another entrance so if you don't want to go through all the whole castle and through all the over the bridge and all that sort of stuff you just go around the back and up the back door because every building needs a back door right and of course the staircase go from the basement floor all the way up to the top so this is the main living room this doesn't actually have you know a tv or anything like that this is more like a seating communal area that the sims come and sit read chat and all that sort of stuff and now i'm noticing when i did the fly throughs and all that sort of stuff i obviously made all the sims like the fireplaces and um actually <laughs> this is quite funny because this fireplace in the middle there actually set on fire um, well, not the fireplace, but the sim, and when I went to go investigate, the sim was standing at the fireplace, so I don't know if she warmed herself too much, and then she set herself on fire, but she was one of the valerial children, and I was just like, oh, well, well. so I kicked them all out and then moved myself sim in there, so I knew exactly where he was, and, you know, he wasn't going to set himself on fire. But then when I did the fly through, the rug is slightly bit different, because I couldn't remember what rug I put down. Uh, so it was actually going to be a different rug. Oops, and I just realised that now watching back. So this is the catacombs, you know, every royal castle and palace needs a catacombs. And I wish I did this before because there's so many little rooms inside of this. And obviously now, like I said earlier, it does little bug out when you do walls and stuff like that. So you can see I do an action with a wall and then it takes a while for it to actually do it. But then eventually I get it all done. I work out there's enough room for you know like over 10 sims here I did like couple bit so these are all single ones and then I did a couples like there's two couple ones which is quite nice I thought you know what those couples that are madly in love they can go there if they're you know desperate enough and also this is the only place that has a window downstairs and I wanted to incorporate it because it looks good on the outside and I didn't want to just black it off so I actually you know put a little little tunnel there down there so they can go look out that window so you can have that view without ever going outside 
bit of move objects on now, moving the curtains in front of the posts, so therefore you don't actually have them on the walls, they're just on the outside, so it just, you can close them off, in my head, you can close them off when there's no one there, or you can open them up when things are there, and now you can see it's just jumped ahead because, as I say, I've done the floor plan, and now I'm just going through the furnishing, and this is the great hall, the great dining room, it's got a little bar area as well, and cause every palace needs a bar and here you can see the fancy wallpaper fancy curtains I've got little dividers here as well again i do forget to put a fireplace in this room and i was kicking myself later on but then i ended up putting it up the opposite side of the windows behind the table so there is one there now as well so this is the same sort of bathrooms that i've done overall in the rest of the house same sort of standard, same sort of furniture, same floor, same wall sort of thing. Kitchen, relatively simple kitchen, two cookers, two fridges, cupboards, you know, a little dining table to like, you know, where the servants go sit and make the food and if they want their own little breakfast they have it there. Again, the amenities I've kept to a low, only stuff that my sims actually crave for, so like a coffee maker and a dishwasher there and a sink. You don't see me put the bin in, but I do go and put one there later on behind a smaller counter, so don't worry about that. And then all these little walkways. Part of the reason why this house is so expensive is because there are several suit of armour guards lying around, but I just thought they looked fancy in these little alcovey bits. So this is the style of these bedrooms on this side. Uh, I'd say I tried mixing it up, so not every room was different, but it's the same sort of thing. You've got the brown furniture, bookcase, you know a dresser, a mirror, and a bed, and the sideboard tables with food candles as well. And this area I thought was going to be the, you know, a family's communal area where there's like bookcases and, you know, where they skill. And there's also another part, another way out to the outside as well, to like the terrace to walk around the outside of a building. And so I thought, well, you know what, we're going to incorporate it here. And of course it's got that tower in it with the glass roof. Like I said earlier, there's only one computer in this whole build and it is located here, just out the way, so the sims don't really go to it straight away. And you know, it's just there. Working on the little courtyardy bit in the middle and forward into the music room. I really didn't know what to do with this room, like seriously, so I just thought, you know what, music room. So we're just finishing up the music room by putting paintings down, decorations, rugs, all that sort of stuff, and this will take us as into the you know into the screenshots of the building. So here we are. This is the top part of the tallest tower. Then we go down one floor into the second or third floor, and we go down one again into like the main entertainment area, which is very nice and tidy. This is a catacombs, a basement, fake basement level, and here are some just overview shots of the castle itself. I just think, like, no matter what angle you're looking at it, it just looks fantastic. Rightio, so that is everything for today. If you liked this video, please do like and subscribe. Have a fantastic day, night, morning, whatever time of day it is for you. Currently it is 1.57am for me, but it's the only time I can record, so hopefully you have a brilliant day ahead of you. Take care. Bye.